Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? Amen. Hello, my wonderful friends. How are you doing? God bless you. This is Voice of Salvation with Venerable Prince Chupu, my papa, Omo oh boy. I am glad to welcome you to today's edition of Voice of Salvation. You know you owe me something. Ha! Ah, what am I owing you? I will tell you straight away. Share the message. Invite people. Share the links. Put it on any platform you belong to. All the groups you belong to. Let people benefit what Holy Ghost is doing through this program called Voice of Salvation. Alright. For today, we are going to take Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come. To worship him. Hallelujah. Oh, briefly, I want to talk today on what God sees in a man and call him a wise man. Who is a wise man before God? My dear, listen to me and check. By God's standard, are you wise? No. In the world system, there are things the world will see and they will call you a wise man. There are things your family will see in you and they will say, that man is wise. There are things your friends will see in you and they will say, you are wise. I also want to show you what God will see in a man and say he is wise. I will not exhaust all of them here right now. There are other things, but I want to show you some from where we just read. The Bible says, wise men from the east came. Now, I will show you. Number one, wise men seek Jesus. Wise men seek Jesus. If you are seeking for Jesus, if you are pushing to know Jesus, God sees you as a wise man. But I have to start somewhere again. How can you seek whom you don't know? So, before you seek for Jesus, the first thing is to know Jesus. By the grace of God, I convey all apprentices fellowship, Omo Boy Fellowship, and that is why I am called Papa Omo Boy. Now, some people will be hearing Papa Omo Boy, Papa Omo Boy, they will come to the church to look for me. Most times, I'll be on Mufti sitting in front of the church. They will meet me directly and they will say to me, Good day, sir. I say, Good day, how are you? I say, Fine. I say, Please, I'm looking for somebody. And I'll ask them, Who are you looking for? They will say, I am looking for Papa Omo Boy. I am seeking Papa Omo Boy. I said, okay, look at his house down there. You can move down, move this way, move this way. That is his house. They will get to my house. and say, please, we are looking for Papa Omo Boy. We met somebody there. And he directed us to this place. They will ask them, who did you meet? They will point at me and say, that is the man you are looking for. He will come back laughing. Do you know their challenge? They are seeking whom they do not know. So, I will start by introducing Jesus to you so that you will know whom to seek. Who is this Jesus? Who is Jesus? Number one, Jesus is God. 
Hallelujah. Jesus is God. Full God. Not a smaller God. He is God in all capacity. Number two. The same Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our Savior. I'm introducing Jesus to you. What made him Savior? He came down on earth and died for my sin and your sin. He wasn't a sinner. Even Herod that crucified him bore witness and said, I found no fault in this man. He is not supposed to die. He is not guilty of any sin. That was the witness of Herod. Before the Jews shouted, if you let him go, you are not a friend of Caesar. Of Caesar. To keep his political post, he had to give in Jesus. But he was playing God's card. Jesus is our savior. Why? He purchased our salvation on cross of Calvary. He didn't just get salvation for us. He paid for our salvation. He paid for it. How much did he pay? His life. That was what he paid to save me. I so much appreciate this Jesus. Jesus, you pay the price with your life to save ordinary sinner like me. Oh, what a wonderful savior he is. My dear, do you know that the same price he paid to save me was the same price he paid to save you? That is the Jesus you will look for. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything. Both great and small. He gave his life for me. He set me free. He is my everything. Now what about you? Some people may say, some guys may ask, Who is this Jesus? You talk about every day. He is my savior. He sets me free. He is my everything. Now what about you? He paid this price for me. He went to Golgotha, Calvary for me. That is the Jesus I am seeking daily. That is Jesus I seek in prayer. That is Jesus I seek in the word of God. As I study the scripture, I want to find Jesus. As I read, go through the pages of my scriptures. Who am I looking for? I'm seeking Jesus. But you cannot seek a man you don't know. We seek Jesus through prayer. We seek Jesus through fasting. We seek Jesus through obedience to the Holy Spirit. We seek Jesus as we study the scripture. But the problem is that you will not seek whom you don't know. When Jesus rose from dead, some disciples were going to Emmaus. Jesus accompanied them. They were talking with Jesus. Telling Jesus that Jesus was crucified. They never knew. They have found Jesus they were looking for. Mary was at the tomb looking for Jesus. And when Jesus appeared and called him, Mary, who are you looking for, woman? She thought Jesus was ordinary gardener. And she said, if you are the one who took him away, tell me he, was, he found whom he was looking for. But he didn't know. The first thing is to know Jesus. 
then you seek him. Tanako barakum brako jaladaga. Holy Spirit is talking to you right now. It is time to surrender to this man that died for you. Sir, how will I know this Jesus? It doesn't cost anything. Surrender to him. Believe that he came on this earth. Some people are saying it's a scam. It's not a scam. He died. How did you know? Were you there? He saved me. That's how I knew. How could I have conquered sin if not that Jesus saved me? How could I have been filled with Holy Spirit if Jesus didn't die and rose for me? How could I command sickness to leave your body, which will happen right now and after this sermon? I will command that sickness to leave your body and sickness will go, cancer will go right now. How will that happen? If not that Jesus died and rose for me and filled me with his spirit. Who told you Jesus is a scam? Who told you Jesus is a white man's religion? Please accept him. Please accept him. He's at the door of your heart right now knocking. Hoping you will open today. How long will you continue to reject Jesus? How long will you continue to reject this offer of salvation? How long? How long will you keep Jesus outside your life? The man that loves you so much. No one can love you like Jesus. No one. The first thing is to know him. For the eyes not a friend. Like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. I beg you, accept this friend. Accept this friend. Accept this friend. Please accept him. Accept this friend. That is how first we are to start is to know him. Then you now begin to seek him. When the wise men saw his star from the east, they traveled all the way from the east to Jerusalem just to find the Savior. There's no price paid in seeking Jesus. No price paid in prayer. No price paid in studying the word. No price paid in going for a retreat. No price paid in fasting. That is too much to seek this Jesus. Because if you find him, you have found everything. You have found everything. Wise men seek Jesus. The first thing that made them wise men was because they were seeking Jesus. And I've told you, there's no point looking for whom you don't know. Some people, when they are reading the scriptures, they cannot see Jesus. They are looking for points of argument. They are not looking for Jesus. Some people are reading the scripture to satisfy their conscience for the day. At least today, nobody will blame me that I've not read my Bible. I've read my Bible today. No, you don't need it to satisfy your conscience. You are seeking Jesus in the pages of the scriptures. What was the second thing that made this man wise? They said, we have come to worship him. Wise men worship Jesus. And I want to tell you that worship is not about singing songs slowly, slowly. No, it is part of worship, but there is main thing that is worship. The main thing that is worship is submission, submission. When you submit to Jesus, that is highest worship. When you submit to his instructions, when he said, do not commit adultery, you submit to his instructions. You want to say something, he said, no, don't say it. It will hurt that person. And you, you do not say it. That is submission. You want to steal. He said, no, I wouldn't like you to steal. You refuse stealing. That is submission. The men, the, those wise men said, we have come to worship him. Worship makes a man wise, worshiping Jesus. And worship, main thing that is worship is submission. 
You know, Thomas called him my Lord and my God. The word Lord means he who must be obeyed. Lord, he who must be obeyed. So when you seek him, now when you have known him by giving your life to him, by saying yes to Jesus, by becoming born again, that is first step, you now begin to seek him in prayer, in Bible studies, in follow-up studies, submitting to some leadership for training, seeking to know him more and more and more. Sinatch will say, I want to know you. The more I know you, the more I want to know you. <laughs> it makes you wise. Another thing that made them wise, they said, we have come to worship him. And when they saw him, they all prostrated. We have come to submit to you. You see Jesus submitting to the Father. It is not my will, but your will. That is submission. When you submit to him, you are worshiping him. And God will count you as a wise person. Now, this Jesus we are talking about how to worship, how to seek. Do you know him? Has he saved you? If he has not saved you, it is not his fault. Because he has only one desire. That is to save the whole world. That is why he died for the whole world, including you. He wants to save you. Will you say yes to him today? Please say, please say yes to him. Do you know celebration that will happen in heaven if you will say yes to him? The Bible says there is joy in heaven over one sinner that will say yes to Jesus. My dear, angels are carrying their trumpets. The host of heaven, I expect them to know if you will say yes to Jesus. So that heaven will rejoice over you for coming back to your Savior. This Savior is waiting for you. Do you want to surrender your life to him? I must tell you, saying yes to Jesus means saying no to sin and Satan. You cannot say yes to Jesus and also so yes to sins. Saying yes to Jesus is equal to saying no to sin and Satan. Satan will quickly tell you, but I've tried to stop this sin and I could not stop it. You cannot stop it. It is Jesus that will save you from sin. You don't stop sinning. You will be saved from sinning. That is what Jesus does. As many that want to accept him, do you want to? I want to pray with you. And after that, I will pray for the sick. And this Jesus I'm talking about will heal them. I cannot heal you. But Jesus can heal you. And he is in me. When I say sickness, go! Sickness will obey me. Do you know why? He that is in me is greater than sickness. But first of all, Jesus wants to save you. Will you surrender your life to him? I want to pray with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, today I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I believe you came on earth and died for my sins. Jesus, you didn't just die. You rose from dead. You rose from the dead and ascended. Thank you. I yield my life to you. Save me. Save me. Save me. You died. You rose from death. And you ran it in my life. Glory to your name. I receive you today as my savior. I receive the salvation you offer by faith. I receive forgiveness of sins by faith. I receive the gift of Holy Spirit by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want to pray for the sick. Lay your hands wherever you are suffering from that sickness. 
in the name that is above all names, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You spirit of sickness, by whatever name you go, I bind you and cast you away from that body. Out! In the name of Jesus, I bring healing to you. By the anointing of Holy Ghost, be healed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are healed. <laughs>